So we're here with Paul Ashard from Taiga. Okay, where does the name Taiga come from? Uh, Taiga, it's another name for the boreal forest. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I think we're, we make electric vehicles, forest, it's green, Taiga, yeah. and yeah. it works out. <laughs> Very cool. So we've got this out today at the property. Our, this is the end of the season, boys and girls. So we're just trying to get this in while we can. We're up trying to do some uh, shooting on the lakes and the slush is like that breaking through ice. So it really wasn't very conducive to that. So uh, we're just down here in a farmer's field and we're just gonna do a little bit of ripping around and uh, I'm gonna give this thing a try. Now, uh, uh, we don't have the echo here today. The echo's the more uh, trill, or uh, sorry, the, the, the back country? The echo's uh, the back country oriented the models. So they actually share the same uh, track length. It's a 154. So the echo's set up on a taller leg and a narrower stance. Right. Um, and they have access to the same uh, power trims as well. Okay. Now, how wide is the track on this? Uh, this is a 15 inch. It's a 15 inch yeah. wide track, 154 long. Are there going to be track length options, or that's? Uh, uh, we now? have two uh, track length options. There's the Nomad and the Echo. They're both on the 154. The Atlas model is going to be a 137, so much the, more of a crossover. The Atlas. Yes. That's what it is. Okay, the Atlas. All right. And uh, what's the ski stance on the front of this? Uh, this is 42. 42 makes sense. It's a utility sled. And what is the weight on this? Uh, it's uh, roughly uh, 600 pounds okay. uh, in production. Yeah. Um, so you know this is using the latest uh, battery cell technology. Uh, so we're really focusing on getting the weight down, uh, making it you know as similar as we can to a combustion sled. Yeah. Uh, with you know all the range uh, we can offer. Well, pretty much. I mean, uh, what Simon? What's a, a VK weigh? VK 540 is about 600 pounds. It's got to be. Got to be more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, horsepower. Everybody talks horsepower numbers. Uh, we know it's you know torque wins races, not horsepower. But w equivalent in horsepower, what would this motor be in this? Uh, this uh, motor configuration can push up to it's uh, 120 to 125 kilowatts, which is roughly 180 horsepower. So there's a there's a lot to give, and you get all your torque at you know, zero RPM. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have no problem spinning the track. Yeah. So it's not running right now. But it might be on. <laughs> but nothing is actually running in this, which is very cool because I was waiting for you to come up the trail. I could hear this loud noise coming, but it was just Simon on the LN. It was kind of annoying. I wanted to hear this. I oh my God, that thing is so loud. It's, it's so loud. <laughs> I did take this for a ride already, but I want to try it out here in the hills. Um, the echo, what is the echo weigh? A lot of people are asking me in the mountain configuration. Uh, so the echo, we're using uh, some better materials in the chassis, so we're shaving a couple of kilos up there. Um, and with the, uh, yeah, removing some idlers, so we're dropping a couple of kilos. Uh, the one up seat also makes a big difference. Yeah. So the echo is going to be uh, a bit more in the 575 range. Okay. Yep. Okay, like, uh, all right. I think a fully loaded RMK is five. No, it's fully loaded Skidoo uh, 154 Summit is one or is 550 pounds. I looked at that the other day. That's fully gassed, fully oiled. That's 550 pounds. The RMK is about 520, all fueled up, good to go. Some guys did a, a YouTube video on it. I'll put the link in the description so they can see it. They actually. Because everybody's always talking about yeah. how light there's yeah. like an RMK actually is in 417 pounds. You still got to put the fuel and everything in it. So yeah. that all makes sense. Yeah, the 40 kilos of fuel makes a difference. <laughs> it does. I mean, you burn it off throughout the day, but I mean, it is what it is. Then you have to refuel it just yeah. like you have to, you park this. So I've been ripping this around a little bit already and it's barely used any power. Well, I ripped it pretty hard actually. Um, you're saying about what 140k on on yeah a... on sort of like typical conditions on the trail uh yeah. it's going to be uh up to 100k yeah um on days like today where it's really slushy maybe more like do it in like hours of operation yeah uh so you know, like i think a solid like three to four hour day of like you know being on throttle yeah yeah um when you're out in the mountains we found we've been able to pull some pretty good days because you know especially when you don't have much trail to do to get there yeah. then you're just like you know ripping around for a bit getting stuck yeah. <laughs> getting unstuck you know yeah. by the time you're all tired out uh, you still have enough range to get back home right um so pretty usable even in conditions we didn't really think these would be useful for you know when we set off uh, we thought it would be a lot more uh, utility focused and of course that's where 
the bulk of our customer clientele is. Uh, but we've seen a lot of interest in the backcountry crowd, uh, yeah. especially out west. Uh, the guys are really stoked on this product. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this would be ideal for me here, uh, just just working my little trap line and, and doing all the stuff that we do in the backcountry here. Yep. Um, I don't do 140. I wouldn't do 100K in a day. Like, I, I, I'm working about 1,000 acres here. I do that in no time. Yeah, exactly. And what's nice about this is the, the ease of usability. Uh, so you clearly see you can crawl at, like, a kilometer an hour, no problem. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to be feathering the throttle or anything weird like that. So usability-wise, it's really nice. Uh, maybe less for guys like you, but, you know, you have kids. Uh, yeah. So you want... They can use a sled, you can throttle it with like a green key, yeah. uh, throttle it down to like 10 kilometers an hour. <laughs> yeah. It can be, you know, super safe for even, you know, beginner, yeah. beginner. So nice for uh, individuals, but really nice for businesses as well who want to manage a fleet. They want to know where their machines are going, how yeah. fast they've, they've been going. Yeah. Um, it's a really good from that perspective. Yeah, and uh, issues with uh, dealing with uh, people who are renting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, coming in, never driven a snowmobile before, yeah. uh, you know, whiskey throttle, and they run into well, especially issues. especially nowadays, yeah, this is like, it seems like it's only bad news every year yeah, about yeah. Like how many people die on snowmobiles. So yeah. really being able to manage your fleet is uh, get, becoming pretty important. Yeah. And these people are, you're talking about a lot of European clientele. Yeah. So the electric aspect is like, it's a it's it's kind a, of a game changer for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. All right, well, I'm going to take this for a little rip. Yep. Okay, because I, I, last time it was just in slush and it was getting a little hairy. So I want to try it for real now. I know. Okay, how do I start it? Uh, so it operates pretty much like a conventional snowmobile. You unkill it, press the big green button to start it. Uh, the dials become green, and you're ready to go. Seriously. Pretty neat. All right, here I go. That's on? Yep. Pretty cool. When you're across the hill, no, we can't hear you at all. We can't hear you. hear you speak right there. You good, eh? Yeah. That's you pretty can't funny. do that with the... Okay, this is probably the worst snow we could be snowmobiling in right now. Yeah. Nothing likes this kind of snow. This would be. This is kind of like driving an RX-1 or the VK or any one of those big things in the in this kind of snow. It just, like it's, it's a foot and a half deep of smashed mush. potatoes. Yeah. Four.
very cool. It's very cool. On a, uh, I mean, like I said, this is less than ideal conditions for this right now. But I think, I know on a, on a hard pack surface or a, or a nice trail, this, this thing is totally effortlessly moving. Like even like just I pack my trail down there, it moves effortlessly, hundred percent. It's a uh, it's a really interesting feel. I wish I could hook it up more. I wish it could. We're gonna have to do this again. We're gonna have to do this again in the fall or in the uh, in the uh, winter next year. But very impressive. It it's a it's it's it's. it's it's a, it's a, I don't know, it's a very nice linear kind of a power feel instead of dealing with clutches. The clutching is uh, is different. You'll, you'll try it and you'll see what you, you think. It's Well, what's cool too is the throttle is like, it's infinitely adjustable. Yeah. So we could totally map in like a, C, similar to CVT, like a much more progressive curve or something that like, it gives you like maybe more like rough control at the low end. So yeah. you're not like bumping yourself yeah yeah well, i see uh and then at the higher end it gives you like more like precise control yeah uh so you've got like actually all the torque at the low end yeah uh, or almost all of it we're at the high end right now uh you won't be able to go it's supposed to top out at 120. yeah uh, right now it'll be like maybe like yeah. 80. Yeah, very cool do you want to try it Simon? yeah for sure it, uh, it's not a good not a good day for turning nope <laughs> <laughs> no it is what it is though okay uh, it's the worst. This is probably one of the worst things. Do you find much? Do you get much of a snow buildup or ice buildup when you're driving in colder weather with snow? Um, not not any more than a conventional snow wheel. Well, that's why we get them in the hands of ski hills and stuff to test out because we we don't we can't really operate these like constantly. Yeah. <laughs> so you know we hand them off to uh, prospective clients and they can. Uh, deal with them for a couple weeks at a time so they can give us kind of the day-to-day -day feedback it's like oh the snow gets packed up too much here right right uh in the long term the air goes wrong here uh ice build up here yeah sure sure i see i like the way the panels like this go in right away and it flares out like there's no panels basically yeah like it's, it's your feet and then it goes right in whereas like a rmk would be out here Windy day, people are going to complain about the wind, but hey, we couldn't turn it off. We tried. If, uh, if we weren't dealing with this nasty snow, it would be much more maneuverable, right? Yeah, for sure. No, it's nice. A very comfortable ride as well. Very. Wow. Yeah, she's a wet, heavy day. So I hear a fan running. Is that to keep it cool? Uh, that's the pump. Uh, 
uh, so it circulates coolant through the the motor and the battery. Okay. Uh, so the coolant we actually use it. The battery is used to either cool down or heat up. Uh, so you know, we call it a thermal management system. Yeah. Uh, so you know the. The thing with lithium-ion cells is they need to be within a temperature bracket between like 28 and 35 degrees Celsius to operate kind of at their their optimum point. Yeah. Any hotter and they start degrading, so you'll get less, less lifetime of your batteries. I mean, like in the cold, it's like that, uh, too cold, and then you don't have access to the full power. Yeah. Uh, your batteries just can't put, push out in the amperage. So we have the heating system on uh, to heat the battery up uh, when you're starting cold. Um, so, then, so, so let's say I we drive up to a, a camp somewhere and we hit this is in the trailer all night. Yeah. Then what happens? Uh, you turn it on and then it'll start preheating. Okay. Um, you'll be able to crawl, uh, but it'll be power limited until it gets up to its operating temperature. Makes sense. Um, so you know, obviously, we recommend that you wait until it preheats to its optimum temp before riding it. But you know, if you're in a situation where you just need to get going, yeah. uh, it'll still let you crawl. Um, so yeah, I mean, no problem. It'll take a bit of its uh, charge uh, to to heat, it, heat itself up. Yep. If it's been plugged in all night, then it'll keep itself warm. It'll be ready to go straight away. Yeah. Um, yep. I I had uh, I had one guy say to me the other day. It, the range isn't long enough. You're, these things are going to fail. And I said, you know, the, the the first guy that invented and made a car, he pulled up to his buddy's garage or barn, and he said, I check this out. And the guy said, you're not going to be able to go very far on that because you're you're not going to be able to get fuel. <laughs> you know. And he, I'm pretty sure the guy said, you know what, I think there will be fuel stations every little bit different distance and then they'll make better technology, you know, we'll make a better motor and then everything will get better. And now look, everybody's driving cars. I mean, and that's kind of where this is all going. It makes sense. And if you can really jam some big power out of this, then that's, that's going to be a, a beautiful thing, right? Especially in the hills. Right on. Well, thanks very much for coming out here today. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. I'm going to take it for one more little rip. Yeah, really bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, when we were here earlier, like, four or five hours ago, this is completely different. Yeah. You can almost walk on this. Usually we get the ultimate problem. We get too early and it's too icy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> then you're, you're, you know, it is what it is. We'll just have you back when the weather's nice or we'll meet you somewhere. We were supposed to meet you out west, but because of COVID, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, uh, we'll see. That's really like, we're reformulating our plans for next week. Yeah, uh, well, you got to be, you have to remain fluid. Everybody might be, like, the National Guard might be out. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. run it, it's on a pack trail this thing jets like <laughs> it launches hard it was pretty hilarious we've been doing a lot of tooler touring out tooling around I'm at half a tank with the, all the stuff up in the back country and then just hammering it here back and forth getting stuck in the slush too getting stuck in the slush and all that garbage it, it went pretty fast So you must be very happy that you've, you guys have designed, put this together, 
and you bring it to market. It's honestly a little hard to believe how far we've made it. <laughs> yeah. So we started this thing uh, five years ago, pretty much. Yeah. And you know, our first project was to, we just did like the conversion off an old MXZ. Yeah. And you know, originally we figured we'd get bought out or uh, we'd just end up like converting sleds. But you know, as we went on, our kind of the scope of our vision expanded. So first of all, we figured like, the only way to build our company up is to really market our own vehicle. Because yep. that's how you're going to get to the margins, that's how you're going to get to the volumes you need to really capitalize yourself. Um, as well as it's just an opportunity to like, you know, rethink the snowmobile a little bit. Um, maybe make something that meets the expectations of our clients a little better. Uh, but as well, you know, as we de developed our powertrain tech, we realized that there are applications for this outside of snowmobiles. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have the Taiga Orca which yeah. is uh, the watercraft we're also uh, developing yeah. uh, and bringing to market. It shares pretty much the same powertrain tech as the snowmobile. So that's identical battery modules, identical motor, uh, and kind of the same firmware yeah. uh, and electronics modules that you know actually makes the machine go. It's just that it's in a different platform. Yeah. Uh, so it's a real, you know, it's kind of a smart way for us to build up our volumes and be able to drive down our costs um, for the end consumer. Um, so you know, we think we have a good shot at this. Yeah, uh, totally. I, I so far, it's been going really well. We've gotten like a great response. Oh, for sure. Uh, and I think we've really proven out that there's a market for this. Yeah. Uh, now we just got to deliver. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have the nice problem of just <laughs> we have so much demand that we just have to fill it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we get the market. Yeah. Well, you also don't want to fill the demand always right off the bat too, because there's there are growing pains potentially, right? So. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, if you pump out a thousand of these and then you find that you need to retrofit something because there was a design issue. Yeah, for sure. That's so that's kind of our, our next step is going for the uh, uh, through the certification process. So, you know, we first of all, uh, you know, when we selected the batteries, we went through a uh, full you know range of tests, like destructive testing, to make sure these batteries are safe. So, you know, making sure the core components are good, yeah. and then. Uh, certifying our own uh, designs up to automotive stands. Not that we have to, but that we really think we ought to, <laughs> right, right. to in order to deliver, uh, you know, reliable products. For sure. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, well, uh, well done. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. Well, uh, a bunch of guys at a university building snowmobiles. Yeah. That's a very cool thing. Yeah. Right okay, we'll let you get on the road. Mind if I try out the line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna for sure. Like oil all over me. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, 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 you'll smell it in a couple of days on you on your coat, but it won't be too bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll give it a little rip. Okay. Except I'm, uh, I've never driven anything like that, so I don't know if there's any. Uh... Just give her. You can hold it wide open. Yeah. <laughs> like. I'd say it's the best way to learn the fundamentals of backcountry right now. <laughs> you learn to lean and all that. Yeah. You, you won't be able to turn unless you just lean it a bit. Yeah. Well, you can hold her pin and have fun. Oh, She's like, oh my god, the power. <laughs> You can literally hold that thing pinned all day. Oh yeah. So I had that thing across the lakes, just holding it. Oh, oh, oh losing speed. Oh, yeah. gaining speed. I thought I was euchred in there with this thing uh, when I went to broke through the ice up on the yeah, top lake. Yeah, I can't wait to see that clip. Oh my god. I hope it all worked. I'm very surprised at the. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm. I, I enjoyed the power of that. <laughs> There's so much fun though. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was having a hoot coming down the road with the thing just like banking off all oh, the, for sure. the sides.
Right on. Okay, let's do it.